Ralph Malfi, as I live and breathe. I've been waiting for you to come in. Uh, this, now, this isn't Roger Malfi. We're not selling Michelob. This is Ralph Malfi. This is Ralph. I mean, if, if you don't know who Ralph is, I mean, he's the guru of club fitting and club design, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Well, thank you very much. It's, I enjoy it. I was looking forward to this simply from the standpoint that I've uh, talked to Bill Hellworth a lot, and he's told me all about your swing. Oh. <laughs> the swing doesn't sound too bad, but it sounds like you may possibly have an equipment problem. What's been happening? Well, you know, and a lot of people do this. They take lessons, they start getting bad, and they go to take lessons, and then, you know, it always gets worse before it gets better when you start taking lessons. That's right. And it's then you finally curve. just throw your hands up and go, you know, I'm destined to play shoot 80, 85, you know, in that range all the time. And then something hits you and you go, well, maybe it is equipment. I mean, it's like my divots. I mean, and that's a perfect example of, of and it might be a flaw in the swing, a little okay. bit to the outside. I've always had that little cast problem. But I know there's ways in technology now that can overcome some of that in user-friendly clubs. My divots are this deep at the toe and the nothing at the hostel, and usually people follow me around trying to get the mental rights on my divots. Okay. Well... From what you're explaining, it's a common thing with a lot of golfers that that happens to. And I can tell you right now that the lies are too flat on your golf clubs for what you're playing now. And I think what we should do here today, we're going to go out and do a full fitting out on the range when we're done here doing this talk. But I want to show you two things, uh, at least, on how you can actually play better. And uh, let's do a little fitting right here and okay. see what's going on. All right. Let me do a quick demonstration for you, Rich, and take this. Little, just a magnet with a shaft right. on the end. And all I'm going to do is just stick it right on the middle of this nine iron face to do a demonstration. You're coming through with the toe down and taking toe down divots. And when you do that, I can bet right now that you're pushing your long irons to the right, pushing your short irons a little bit more to the right. And we don't know about your woods yet, but let's just discuss the iron part. Right. And if you'll just watch this a second, if I rotate this, all, the leading edge of this club is always pointed at the target. And as I rotate this club a little bit more upright on the toe, flatter in lie, the ball will go left. If I rotate it this way, the ball will go right. There's, if, if the astute listener is watching this, he's going to see that only at this one point do I get maximum trajectory, the best directional control, and maximum backspin and bite. And it's only there. It doesn't occur anywhere else. So we have to dynamically fit you and find out where you come through at impact. And that'll determine exactly what we have to do on the lies. Another thing that people don't realize, they say, well, gee, when I set the club down, you know, why don't I just set it down on the playing position and have it sitting in this spot, and will that fit right. me? People don't realize that when you come through impact, from the address position to your hand position and to the impact position, you're in a different position. Right. Actually, you flatten the golf club one to four degrees just by hand position from address to impact. Also, another thing occurs, and I'll take this little clicker off right here, and we'll stick that in there. Another thing occurs is the shaft actually bows and bends down right. with this big hunk of metal. So that flattens the lie. So the only way that we're going to be able to fit you to lie is we're going out on the range with five irons and nine irons. We're going to put a piece of tape on the sole of this golf club. You're going to actually hit some shots for me off of a board. And that board's going to leave a mark on the sole, right. and your mark, Rich, well, the is going to be way of detecting right out here. Lie. Right, and it's done, and it was a system right. that I developed back in uh, the late 1970s, which has been used by almost all fitting systems today. Well, you know, a lot of people, when they buy a set of clubs, whether it, you know, it be a custom fitted set or a set off the rack, just like a suit, they're going to have to do something to them. But there's more to fitting you for a set of clubs because I found out that my shafts are a little too long for me. So I have to choke down a little bit. And shaft, a lot of people don't realize, the trajectory of the ball is determined by the length of the shaft. That's correct. And another is the grip. That's right. The shaft is critical to trajectory. And the fact that you're choking down because the clubs are too long is also destroying another aspect, and that is you're choking down on a tapered grip that actually gets smaller as you choke down. And by doing that, it may, a too small a grip gives you a much too active a wrist. And then conversely, if you had too large a grip for you, it's going to just be too hard to get any wrist action. So we need to find out the proper grip size. And if you want, 
I've got three right here, and we can do a real quick grip fitting right on you. Okay. And just check it out before we even get out to the range. All right, you got three different grip handles here. Right, and there's more sizes than this, but I picked these three because I'm pretty sure you're going to fit into one of these. And what I'd like to do is start off with a standard men's size. Okay. And I'd like you to grip it just like you're going to hit a shot. All right. Just like your same grip pressure, get just like you really have a full golf club there. Okay. And now re maintain that. Take your this hand off right here, just this hand, and let me look and see. Okay, now we're going to move into and test another one, a 64th of an inch oversize. All right. Now that should feel a little bigger to you. It does. Same position, same grip tension, take okay. off the right hand. And what I'm looking to do is see how much gap we right. have in here. And now I want to move up to one more, and this is a larger one. That's a 32nd oversize. And it's critical to have the right grip size so you get the right wrist rotations and impact and it doesn't cause anything funny in the swing. Okay? Probably you're playing standard size grips right now, but by the fact that you're choking down, you're playing undersized grips by choking. So we're on the range, we're gonna get use the impact decal test. We're gonna find out which length you can handle so you're gonna be holding the grip in the proper location. And I can tell right now that probably what felt better to you was slightly oversized, a 64th of an inch. Mm -hmm. And you fit into that much better than standard. Hey, usually when I regrip, I tell them put an extra wrap on. Okay, and that's exactly where you fit. And again, getting stopping that choking down is going to help you dramatically in playing better. Uh -huh. The name of the game in fitting, we don't go out trying to get a person to hit it farther. We go out with all the grip size changes, getting them into the right shaft, the right trajectory, the right length golf club, so they hit it more solid. And if you hit a ball more solid, it's going to translate into greater distance. It's going to translate into all the things that you want to happen on the course. You need to worry about having one swing, not three different swings for three different lie angles or bad club right. set makeups. So we're going to get you fixed up here, and you're going to play better than you have. And it's not like taking a lesson, which takes a little bit longer time to realize the benefits. I'm going to give you instant results when we send this custom oh. club set down to you after oh. we're done being fit. Oh. Instant. I would Guaranteed. I would dance at your wedding if you can do it instantly, because I'm, I'm like a lot of amateurs, I've had it. You know, I just, there's got to be something, and uh, we keep looking for it, so we got to find it. Well, it's enlightening, and the fact that probably about 50 or 60 percent of the golfers out there, they feel that, well, why should I go get fit because it may not help me? It'll help everybody. Even if you're a beginner, you should certainly take a lesson to, to not go down the path of uh, trying everything that you find the secret on. You should also get fit to get started off right. All right well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to let you fit me for a set of clubs. Okay. I'm going to put them in my bag, and I'm going to play with them for two or three months and see what my scores do, and I'm going to let them out. Well, right. Bill, Bill told me you'd be the toughest person I ever fit, and I can tell right now that it's going to be easy, and we're going to get you into the right clubs, and you're going to play a lot better. All right, Ralph. Well, let's go take a look at it. Okay. Well, the trip out to the range, like you said, it uh, it told on me, and it told you what you needed to know. And I chose the torque arm. You've got the Australian blade and the Australian 2000, but I chose this torque arm because it's a little bit more forgiving club than the blade. Uh, I don't have the swing for the blade club. Well, you've got a good swing. It surprised me. I mean, the swing was better than I expected, but we did find a number of faults in the fitting part of it, and we've got those corrected. And the torque arm is an excellent golf club for you because the center of gravity is slightly forward. It's very low. You can, you have a tendency sometimes to hit a few balls out on the toe, and the torque arm is going to be the most forgiving club on a toe. Not a few. You know I'm, how everybody's I'm got that kind. nice little spot right in the center of their club? Yeah, the, the tour out. wear spot? Yeah, mine's out on the end of the toe. Yeah, you have the tour skid spot, we right. call that, That's where right. it skids a little toward the toe. But the torque arm, as you as you found out, was an extremely solid club to hit, and that I recommended them. You confirmed it by hitting them and saying that it felt the best to you, too. Well, I also didn't know I got back in here that you can fit me for a putter, too. It's the most overlooked thing in fitting, and we went out there and we got your new length. Uh, you were playing with a 35. It got you down to a 34 where you should you be in your lies strokes, a little bit. You get more bit strokes more on the green anyway, so that ought to hey, be a... Uh, don't ever forget the short game. And like I said, this is uh, Ralph Malpe, not Roger. No Michelo. We got to go take care of a break. Thanks, Rich. I All enjoyed right. it. Right. I really enjoyed it. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break.